our hands and uh, give honor to our uh, pastor. respect you as a spiritual mother and as my supporter and just please give it up for him and for her again. And, uh, I want us to honor my assistant pastor, uh, Pastor Colum. Let's give it up for him. And give it up for my wife. My wife is, is in the, um, amongst you. Uh, Minister Angel, sometimes I feel at home and I don't really introduce and uh, guess what happened? I went to minister somewhere and I forgot to recognize him. So I have to get in the habit of... Amen. Amen. Yes. Give it up for God. I mean, God has done so many things for us to Looking at people, just cast your mind. How many, how many accidents have you seen on your roads going to work? We are still alive. Yeah. We are here. Yeah. We gathered here. There was something that you should be, you know, grateful for, and that is dear life. I want you to just give the loudest praise offering. Just give the I loudest. Moving this very end times. 
amongst his people. And uh, he's only looking for those that are hungry. Come on. Those that are thirsty. Those that want to give their all and all. Maybe a healing you are looking for. Maybe a testimony you are looking for. Maybe something you want to do. You want to hear from God. You want God to move on your behalf. He wants you to search him with all your heart. And when you search him with all your heart, you will find him. Anything outside that, it will be hard to connect with him. So I want you, I don't know what you are here for today, but I want you to begin to, as you sit there and listen to the word, I want you to be committed to God. Opening your heart to receive. And God, I believe, will meet you in Jesus' name. I want to I want to talk briefly about something that I have titled the keys to the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is made up of keys. It's like a building, many buildings that you need to enter. But without a key to the building or to the gate, you can't enter into the room or the building to access what belongs to you until you get the key to that building. There are many buildings and mansions of blessings that belong to you, each one of you. But there is a key you need in order to access those mansions or those blessings. And that's what I'm about to discuss with you today. I want us to go to uh, Proverbs chapter 25, verses 2. And I'm reading the word. The Bible says this. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. Uh-huh. To, uh, to set out a matter is the glory of kings. So, I just want you to take, I'll take you to uh, also Deuteronomy 29, 29. Deuteronomy 29, 29. And watch this. The secret things belong to God. But the things revealed belong to us and to our children forever that we may follow all the words of them of this law. So there are some things that he has revealed to us. There are some things that are concealed to us that we need to search as kings and princes, uh, princes of the kingdom. The Bible says in uh, Revelation 1, chapter 6, that we are what? Kings and priests. So, when the Bible says that it is is a matter of kings to search that thing that has been concealed, it's talking about me and you, nobody else, me and you. And so there are things that have been revealed there are things that he has also concealed. But in order to open the concealed matters, you need to search them out. And that is what you need the keys to open. What am I talking about keys? A key is a small piece of shaped metal with insertion cut to fit the words of a particular lock. And that is inserted into a lock and tend to open and or close if. In other words, the key is to open or close a gate. So why I say the key? Because the key gives you access to what you are looking for. To open it and to close it. How do you get a key? See, whatever you are looking for in life has already been provided by God. All right, all right. Whether it has been revealed or concealed, He already provide, He has already provided it. And so your 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 duty is to search the issue out and to keep in into that relation. I want to take you to uh Matthew chapter 6, 33. Matthew chapter 6, 33. Matthew chapter 6, 
It says what? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And every other thing shall be what? Added unto you. Yeah. And it's a key, the greatest key into accessing the keys of the kingdom by seeking first the Come kingdom on. of God and its righteousness. And after that, what everything else, not some of the things, everything else, which means that when you seek the kingdom of God first, every other thing you need in life shall be one and made available to you as a child of God. Amen. See, and it's time for us to begin to seek the face of God and the things of the kingdom yes. rather than seeking our own things we want in life, what we want to happen in our life. We, we need to lay down self and begin to chase the things of God. And when we begin to seek God wholeheartedly, everything is going to make himself available to us. Yeah. Whatever information needed, you will see. If every information you need him to channel to you, he will channel it to you Come as on. a son, as a daughter. Yes. But you can't go to him a uh, uh, half, how do I even say, cold or warm. You are neither here nor there. Come on. Now, it's either you are for him or you are against him. Right. You can't be in between. Right. So if you want the things of the kingdom, if you want to unlock your destiny, then today I hereby tell you, seek the things of the kingdom first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seek the things of the kingdom. Let the matters of the kingdom be on your heart. Be in a, see, The keys of the kingdom are obtained by revelation. The key you need to unlock your spiritual growth. The key you need to unlock your marriage. The key you need to unlock your finances. The key you need to unlock your healing. The key you need to unlock that problem you are facing is received by revelation. And who gives that revelation? According to the Bible, God gives us that revelation. And so if you are not in good standard with God, how can God release that information to you? Jesus, when he came on this earth, he did stay in constant communion with the Father. He never detached himself with the Father, from the Father because he knew his source of information, his source of power was from the Father. And so when he detached, he has detached away from the power and the source of information. The other day, I want to take you to Matthew. We're going to do our reading, most of our reading from Matthew. Amen. Let's go to Matthew, chapter 16. It will shock you that most of us are sitting there, but we don't know Jesus. And uh, that is the very reason why there are some unanswered prayers. He's not real to you. So there are some answers, unanswered prayers. Listen to me. Let's go to Matthew chapter 16. But today, I know under the unction of the Holy Spirit, somebody is about to receive divine revelation that will lead you to your destiny. You didn't hear me. If you heard me, you would, you would shout amen to that. I said you will receive divine revelation. You will receive divine revelation to uncover your destiny in the name of Jesus. Listen to me. Matthew chapter 16, verse 15. And I'm reading the word. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Okay, you know what? Let's, re let's begin from uh, verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, uh, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias. <laughs> And other Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And Jesus answered the question and said, The 15, see, listen to it. He said, He said unto them, But them say, but whom say it? So the King James Version is very something else. Okay. <laughs> and then verse 15. He said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? Meaning he's asking his own people he was working with. Whom do you think I am? And what will happen? 
and verse 16. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. But I was wondering, why would God ask them who do, do they think he was? Then probably God or Jesus Christ had the revelation that most of them didn't know who he was. When he asked, it was only John that was able to come up with a revelation. How did he got that revelation? Listen to me. The 17 says this, and Jesus answered, and he said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bardona, uh, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Uh -huh. So the Father revealed it unto them, but he concealed it from the other 11 people. It was only Peter, Simon, that the Father revealed or, 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 or unveiled the concealed information of Jesus Christ unto him. Yeah. He had the key, and this revelation put about a very vital key to the kingdom, which is binding and loosing. Without the key, without the, without you knowing the, 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 the Son of God, Without you knowing Jesus Christ, in reality, will not give you the permission to access the burning and loosing in the kingdom. So the disciples needed to know who Jesus really was in order to access that key. And it's a vital key to build the kingdom. And, and here were, were they that they asked the question, who do you think I was? And they were standing there until God revealed it to what? Simon Peter. And what will happen? Next, what will happen? He said this in the verses 18. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock will build in them. Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. Listen to me. The 19 is interesting. And I will give unto thee the keys. I will give unto thee the keys. To who? To the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall, shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Yes. Listen, without him catching that revelation of who Jesus Christ was, that key would have not been what? Made available to them. Mm. And without a key, without a key, it will be hard to deal with the adversary. And so the key was very vital to the building of the church. So it was very vital and necessary for them to know the key. Yes. I want you to get this knowledge. Bear in mind that he did not catch the concealed information by his own knowledge. He caught the concealed information by divine revelation. Amen. Right. By the revelation right. from the Father. Yeah. All right. Listen to me. Many of us sit here. There is something you want to do. There is a destiny you want to live. But there is something restricting you. There is something pulling you back. When you go forward in the things of God, when you go forward in the things that you want to do, it looks to me when you go forward, two step, something pulls you back. That is a key you need to unlock that thing and for that thing to leave you. I came to announce to you this morning by the divine revelation of the word of God, you are receiving that key today. You will never leave here the same way you enter. I said receive divine revelation today. Businessmen that have made it, Master, they caught a revelation. Uh -huh. They caught a revelation that most of us never caught. Amen. Come on, and that is why they made it to the top. Yeah. See, the other day, let me tell you a story. The other day, the Bible said Jesus sent Moses to go and redeem the children of Israel. From bondage. God spoke to him. But he wanted a validation. Because he was afraid that when he go to the people. They will not accept him. Because they will doubt him. 
for seeing or having an encounter with God. All right. And he asked God, what did they tell me? I need some validation. And God said, look, what is in your hands? He says, a staff. He says, put it down. The staff, he laid it down and he turned toward a snake. Where was the staff? Did he know the staff would turn into snake? No. Until the revelation. Right. There is something you are looking for, and it's crossed by you. Ah, come on now. Come on. But you need a divine access into the calling that thing. See, the very set of cloth he was wearing had power to do wonders. But he did not know until God unveiled the skills of his heart. I said this morning, God is about to unveil the skills of the heart. It's the limit shall I receive. We need divine revelation. Yes. Without divine revelation or without divine knowledge, we'll be left in the dark. Because there are certain things that has been made available to us. There are certain things that has not been made available to us, but it's already available, but we need to access it. Mm. But we can't. How do we get to it? That is a question. Wait for me, I'm taking you there. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, come on, come on. I want to take you to uh, <coughs> Genesis. I want to take you to Genesis. Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Verses um, 15 to 19. And I'm bringing the word of the Lord to you. When the water in the skin was gone, she put the boy under one of the bushes. Then she went off and sat down about a Bush, is it a bow shot away? For she thought, I cannot watch the boy die. <coughs> and as she sat there, she began to sow. She's a mother. She cannot watch the son die. All right. She, she carried her, uh, him for nine months, went through some afflictions. So it, it, she can't bear seeing the son die. So she went, why would she, she went far away? and lay the baby somewhere and watch the baby go. Listen. Listen to what happened. God had the cry, the, the, the boy crying, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What is the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy cry as he lies there. Lift the boy up and take him by the hand. For I will make him into a great nation. Then God opened her eyes. God did what opened her eyes. And she saw a well of water. So she went and filled the skin with the water. And gave the boy a drink. All right. The well she, God opened her eyes was right by her. Uh -huh. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. She did not see it. Until God opened her eyes to the world. Yes. We need divine revelation. Come on. Yes. Come on. Come on. Come on. We need divine revelation. Come on. We do need divine revelation to move forward into our next dimension. Maybe you are in the ministry. You are doing a job. You are, see, you need divine revelation to 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 out 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 match your peers mm -hmm. yeah. with divine yeah. knowledge. You would hold a capacity. Of information that your peers will not never get access to because you are in constant communion with your father in heaven who right. you knows everything who, who knows the deep secret of the heart right. Jesus. Let's, let's, 
listen to me. The Bible says it, and I believe uh, is it First Peter. Um, I think Second Peter. Second Peter chapter one verses three. See, it says, "By His divine power has given us everything we need. Everything we need. He's given everything." That's what he said. What is preventing us from going forward? What is preventing us from becoming who God wants us to become? I would say lack of divine revelation. Come on, come on. If I had had this revelation earlier on, I think I would be far ahead. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. In my destiny. Yeah. Listen to me. There are keys, and I'm going to share with you a key to love life. And I'm going to share another key for your prosperity right. today. I'm going to give you just two keys because of the sake of time. Uh, 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 let's go to um, uh, um, Ephesians chapter 6, 2 to 3. If somebody have it, if you can read for me, that would be great. Real quick. Real quick. And all the children in the room, just listen to this. If somebody has it, can you please read it for me, please? Ephesians 6, 2 and 3? Yes, please. Okay. And somebody else will open um, Exodus 23, 25, 26. And today, the Spirit of the Lord was in the house. Because every speaker that spoke had a message encoded for the body of Christ. It is only those that move by the spirit that could catch the revelation and the words that they were spoke that they spoke. Yeah. I, 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 want, I, want, I, want, I want just to read real quick. Honor, honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Children. I want you to go to uh, Exodus. Chapter 23, 25, 26. <laughs> Somebody there? And you shall serve the Lord your God. Good. And he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And he, I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Jesus. There shall nothing cast their young, nor be bare in the land. The Jesus. number of thy days I will fulfill. Jesus. Jesus. So here we have both. Keys for children and for adults. You have to serve the Lord your God. There are some keys and there are some things you need in serving God, which time will not permit me to go into deeper. But if you want a long life as an adult, devote yourself to the things of God. Serve God well. Honor God with everything you have. Amen. And it shall fulfill every yes, single yes. day of your life. Amen. See, children, obey your mothers, your parents. Honor them. Serve them. Yes. And you shall yes. live long. Amen. I want to take you to another key. That's a key. That's a key. Go to Psalm 1, verses 1 and 3. Real quick. Psalm 1, 1, wow. 3. Yeah. Okay. That is death. <laughs> Do you want to prosper? Amen. Yeah. Do you want to prosper? Amen. Do you want to prosper? Yeah. Listen to me. Uh, uh, it says, Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the, in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law do he meditate day and night. And the verses 3, pay good attention. When after you have done all these things, the Bible is required of you as a child of God. Listen to me. Listen to the promise that comes along with it. Listen to what the covenant a benefit of doing what the Lord has asked you to do, to meditate and resist sin, to, to stay from the ungodly. Listen to the promises that are attached to this thing. He says, well, And he shall bless you. Yes. He shall establish you. Yes. He 
establish it. Listen to me. I want to take you to the key uh, uh, of your world. Where your world has been stored. Listen to me. Go to uh, Isaiah chapter 45 verse 3. Move, move real quick with me. Isaiah chapter 45. Real quick with me. Zadaha. Wow. Real quick, real quick, real quick. My tie. Oh. 45 3. 45 3. Okay, and I read. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by, the, by, uh, by thy name, I am, I am the God of Israel. There are, there are riches hidden in secret places. Where? Why is the secret place? I'm going to take you there. Go, go with me to Matthew chapter 7, verses 27. Here, God, we, we saw Jesus sending Peter to go to the sea. There, there, are, there, are, there, are, there are riches tied up under the sea. There are, there are, there are, there are, there are wealth tied up under the sea. And the enemy's mother, the enemy needs to vomit it out. Oh my God. Listen to me. So he sent him to go. He said the first thing he can, he should open the mouth of the feet and there will be and, and, and crying in the, in, the, in the mouth of the world, the faith. He should take it. Yeah. Why? Jesus knew exactly where to find. And it was under the ocean. It was under the ocean. Listen to me. God said something in Job chapter 15. He said, God will make the enemy vomit everything he has won. Every righteous he has swallowed in his mouth. Where was the money found? The money was found in the belly of the fish. The, the money was found under the sea. According to Genesis chapter 1, verse 6. Oh my God, when you read Genesis chapter 1 down, God had to command the sea, uh, the, the water to separate for, for him to get a bare ground. For him to be able to what? Create stuff. Where was the sea? And what was the ground? Where was it? was under the sea. There was something that was embedded under the ground. And God got the revelation. And he commanded the water to separate. For him to get a bare ground. To do what he needed to do. There is something of yours that have been tied up under the sea. That you need to command. You need to speak to the sea. Begin to speak to the sea. Command your things back. See, whatever you are looking for has oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, See, yeah. it was tied up. So when Jesus came to the world, he knew exactly where to get the money. Because already he had started from the beginning. He had to, he had to get it. He had to separate things, get it, move the waters, and get what he needed. So when there was time for him to get needed money, where did he go? I want you to go to Job so I can show you something real quick. Go to Job 20, 2015. Real quick. Real quick, real quick. I'm going to minister to a couple of people. Real quick. So you can know what I'm, I'm talking about. Real quick. Job 20. Uh, Glory. Yeah. Okay, 15. He has swallowed down riches and he shall vomit them up again. God shall cut them out of his belly. What did God do? He gave a command, go to the sea, cut the first fish, yeah. open the mouth. Right. Yeah. You are not catching the revelation. Right. You are not catching the revelation. See, everything that the, the money, the financial difficulties, whenever the enemy takes your, your, your stuff. Come on. Your legs are in the sea. I tell you, if, you, if God opens your eyes to you see what is going yeah. on under the sea, you will be marked. Your finances are in the sea. Your babies are in the sea. I said your health has been tied up. Somebody, your, your eyes is under the sea. Your career is under the sea. Come on. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. I pray that God will give you a listening eye, a, a listening heart, and an eye for divine revelation. Let's just get up. Let's just get up. Let's just get up. Father, I give you all the glory. I bless you. I give you glory for this message. I pray that you would give, begin to pray. Ask God to open your eyes. Open your spiritual eyes. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray that prayer real quick. Begin to pray that prayer for a minute real quick. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Close your eyes. Begin to pray. Ben, come. Come. Please come. Begin to pray, begin to pray. Yeah, the, the guy in the dreadlocks, I want to speak to you. Come on. Yeah, please come. Yeah. Please come. Pray, pray, pray. 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 How are you doing? I'm doing. Uh, 
as you enter, pray, pray, continue to pray. Just close your continue to pray. Yeah. Ask God to, be, uh, to open your eyes, open your spiritual eyes, to see what is hidden from you. Yes, to see what is hidden from you. Oh, 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 pray, 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 pray. Don't stop. Pray. pray. The Lord opened my eyes as you entered the room. Yes, Lord. And I saw something God began to do in your life. Even as you were a blood drop in your mother's womb. Right, yeah. God said to tell you, he has ordained you yeah. and called you as a servant. I saw an unusual grace upon your life. I saw a singing grace on your life. And I saw a prophetic call also on your life. And God said that he has called you and chosen you among your family to do a special work for him. And, 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 and the time is coming that you are going to begin to walk in your prayer. He said you are not like anybody else. You can't be everyone. And you can't please everyone. Because he has put his word in your mouth. See. I see a straight fire coming out of your out of your mouth, and you are speaking, and people are falling under 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 the power of God, and you are singing, and people yeah, are slain in the yeah, spirit. Lord. See, there is a healing grace in your hands. There is a healing grace in your hands. Yeah. See, out of you shall flow rivers of living water. Yeah, yeah. There is a strong prophetic call. You shall roam long. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Go to the length and breadth of this country. Your name shall be known. It will be a household name. Thank you. And God says he's been speaking to you. He's been speaking to you. Even in dreams. And even in your in your quiet time. Am I, am I talking the am I saying the truth? Are you sure? I'm not lying. Are you sure? Yes. I want you to give a clap offering to God. I want you to give a clap offering to God. I want you to, I want you to give a clap offering. See, God wants you to hear from this message. I don't know, but I see another star jump up from you, your head, to the guy standing right by the woman crying. But I see a star jump up from you to him. But I see something unusual also on him. And I see the same singing grace yeah. on him. Yeah. I see the same singing grace on him. Is he your brother? Is your brother? Is your brother? Okay, good. Because yeah. I saw the same star jump to him. See, please, is, is he your son? Watch. God is going to use you mighty. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes if you feel something very unusual about him, you do. God, God, God wants you to raise him in such a powerful way. Uh, be very, uh, very cautious and just help him, bring him. It's, how old are you now? 16. God will use you. I want you to get into the secret place, okay? Seek him. There will be a visitation. Because I see an angel of the Lord coming to you in the night hour. And I see in that visitation, the angel is going to give you a Bible. And the angel is going to pour an oil on you. And from that day, you will be an unusual man. It shall come to pass. Has anybody told you you are a man of God? Has anybody prophesied of your life? Told you? How many people? One before. And what did they tell you? They just said uh, that I'm doing good things in the world. Yeah, you are unique. 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 I want to prophesy to you. You are my wife. But I want to take this. Uh, do we have an oil? I want an oil real quick. I want to anoint him. Don't go. See, my eyes were, was open in the spirit. I know you are pregnant. I know you are pregnant. Have you checked the gender of the baby in your womb? You haven't. Oh, well, I'm going to tell you the gender of the baby in your womb. And I'm going to tell you the name of the baby. This will be a sign that whatever I'm going to tell you is true. And everybody here shall see yeah. and behold the glory of the Lord. And somehow God wants to use this to prove something here. 
The Lord opened my eyes and I saw as it were in a spirit. And I had a visitation with an angel. The angel directed me to point, I mean, to watch what was on your womb. Even before you got pregnant. I told you before you got pregnant that you were pregnant. You never knew you were pregnant. Fine. After that, an angel, I had another visitation. And the angel opened my eyes. And I saw as it were in the spirit. And I saw that there was something unusual about the baby you were carrying. I saw something that looks like a baby boy. Yeah. A baby boy in your womb. And the Lord told me that the baby shall out before he comes out. He shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. He can his womb come out of the womb with the Holy Spirit. And the, and the Lord said to me, through the Holy Angel, and said to me that the boy is coming in the spirit of Elijah. And he shall be called John. 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 And the Lord said he's a prophet. And he's going to go to the ends of the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the Lord said, this baby shall bring laughter to you and me yeah. and shall bring laughter to your family and my family and the world he shall walk in the righteousness of God and the Lord said this baby is a holy 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 baby every attack on him on his life and calling yeah. today I stand here on this holy altar an exalted altar of the Lord and I break every every cash, every assignment of the enemy to paralyze his brain. And I restore and I declare that he shall live to declare the words of the Lord. Yes. I pray for strength for you to carry this holy being. And I pray that Lord, you will strengthen thy servant. Give her the, 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 the strength she needs in order to carry. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You will never miscarry this baby. You shall bear him and bring him forth in Jesus' name.
stretch your hands here. We are praying that every every one of them will be released as the word of the Lord came. I was driving here to church and the Lord said, Go, I want you to call for anybody that is signed or and somebody connected to them. I pray and pray for their release and I will release them. So I want you to pray right now. Join hands and join by faith, your faith with me. And let's pray. Father, as you spoke to yourself, Father, I've come and I've released your word. Father, perform your word. I connect them and I contact them by the spirit. Father, I break every demonic stronghold in their life. I command the gate of bronze and the bars of iron to break asunder. In the name of Jesus, Father, I declare the release. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I declare the release.